Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to another planty video. So today's video is going to be short and sweet because I've been meaning to make an updated potting mix video. I have another one on my channel, but it's very long, so I just wanted something that people could easily reference. So that's what today's video is going to be. I think that this is a very easy, beginner-friendly potting mix to make. I only use four ingredients, so it's very simple. Um, I do keep it in this bin right here, so I just wanted to talk about this for a second, just to give you a suggestion of how to store your potting mix. So I like to use this long, kind of flat bin for a couple of reasons, and the first reason is that it has a higher surface area, so it kind of spreads the soil out a little bit more. I feel like once you get into using like really deep um, or tall bins, you might be a little bit more prone to getting mold and things like that. It might just be a little bit musty. I like this because it spreads everything out a little bit, so I've never had any issues with mold or anything like that, which is really nice. The second reason that I like this type of bin is for storage purposes. Since it's so flat, I can slide this right under my bed, that's where I keep it, or when I had my wire plant shelves, I could just slide it right underneath of that, so it's very easy to find a place to tuck this into. So yeah, love this bin as far as storage goes. Um, I guess we will start getting into the ingredients. Okay, so what makes up the base of my mix is coconut coir. I have a giant bag of it. It's on the floor, so let me grab it. Okay. Oof. All right. So this is the coconut coir that I've been using and loving. You can buy coco coir in a couple of different forms. So the first form that you'll see it in is a compressed brick that you have to rehydrate and you're actually supposed to like rinse it a bunch as well. It can be a little bit of a procedure. Um, I used to have that and yeah, to be honest, it was a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, now I have this one which comes in this big bag. This was actually so kindly gifted to me by a local plant person because they weren't using it anymore, which is really nice because this is a lot as you can see. And the nice thing about this is, first of all, it's made locally. This is made by Cinnabar Valley Farms. So if you're here on the island, you can look for this brand. I really like this one. If not, I'm sure you can find something similar wherever you live. Um, but what I like about this one is that it's ready to use, you guys. It's already been rehydrated and rinsed, so literally I just scoop it out of here and add it to my mix and it works great. Now the purpose of this in my potting mix, this makes up kind of the base. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, I usually add this first and this stuff holds onto water, you guys. The more moisture that I want my potting mix to hold, the more coconut coir I will add into that. And obviously the less I will add if I want it to be like a super well-draining chunky mix. What I like about this is that even though it makes up the dense part of my potting mix and holds onto that water, it's still not super heavy. Like it's still got some of that light fluffiness about it, so your soil's not going to get super compact. Okay, so the next thing that I add into my mix is bark chips. So the bark that you'll find is usually fir bark, and you can find this in multiple different places. Um, this is just from the pet store. Yeah, I just picked up a big bag, but you can also find bark at um, most places that sell plants actually and it does usually come in a variety of different sizes there's like multiple different brands that sell it i haven't tried that many of them this is just what i've been using for cost purposes because bark does tend to get a little bit expensive so i just try to buy it in like the biggest bags that i can i don't think that it matters too much adding bark to your mix is going to provide a lot of that chunkiness and i have really been loving going really bark heavy when creating my mix recently however i will say um be cautious if you're an underwater i'm also an underwater so i have to be like extra on top of things now that i've been doing this a lot but if you are adding a lot of bark a lot of orchid bark to your mix then um, you are gonna have to water more frequently because it just adds so much chunkiness and aeration to the mix that you are going to have to just be watering probably a little bit more frequently. But that is why I love it. It makes your mix super chunky. Um, roots love to grow around our orchid bark, I've found, especially for uh, plants with larger root systems. Okay, so the last two I'm gonna kind of talk about together. And that's because they provide a similar kind of function in my mix. Um, so the first one is perlite, which you guys know I love perlite. Um, probably my favorite way to propagate fantastic for that. I do have a bunch of videos on perlite propagation if you're interested, but I do also love adding it into my soil mix because it is so light and fluffy. Like perlite is, honestly, this just feels like nothing. It's very porous. It's going to add a lot of aeration to your mix. 
It's especially a good remedy if you do have too dense of a mix. It can also be used for if you are in a pinch and you do just have to pick up a bag of potting mix from the store, you can just add a bunch of perlite into it. It'll make it a lot more fluffy, a lot more light, well draining, your plants will like it much better. So yeah, that's like a quick, a super quick a way to um, upgrade your potting mix at home. I should also make a disclaimer that with perlite, this is like, a volcanic glass that's been heated up at a really high temperature if i'm not mistaken and it's very dusty um, and you don't really want to be inhaling those like glass particles so it is recommended to wear a mask when you're dealing with perlite especially when it's dry now the last thing that i'm going to be talking about is pumice and i use pumice for a pretty similar reason as i use perlite it just provides a little bit more drainage but what's different about pumice is that it's heavy like the, this is a very heavy rock. So it ensures that you're still gonna have some of that drainage in the bottom of your pot because perlite tends to kind of float near like the upper half of your pot. But pumice is going to stay on the bottom. Obviously it's heavy, it's not gonna rise. If anything, it's gonna sink a little bit. So it's really great for that. It just adds to like the chunkiness and the aeration in the mix. These are the, these are the themes of a good potting mix, you guys. You want it to be chunky and you want it to have aeration. What plants do not like is dense, compact soil and being like waterlogged. So as long as you feel that your mix is pretty light and airy, then I think that your plants will like it. Okay, you guys, this is what makes it really easy. And that is the fact that I don't measure anything. I literally just throw it in until it looks good to me. So if you're a beginner, you'll probably, you might hate that, which I'm sorry, but I just don't measure. I'm not a measure. We just, we just do this intuitively, okay? So... Like I said, I'm gonna start with the cocoa coir. Okay, starting with the cocoa coir, put a couple of scoops of that in. And then the bark, I literally just pour in. Next, I do perlite. And then pumice. I forgot to mention that I do have two sizes of pumice. Um, the size that I wanted would be like in between these ones, but I only have two sizes and this one's really small. I would go for something bigger than this if you could find it. I couldn't. I just wanted to say that I would also prefer a larger size of perlite, but this has just been all I could find. Um, I know that they do sell like large perlite though, so if you have the option, um, it wouldn't hurt. And same with the pumice, definitely a larger pumice than this. Um, I'm not sure why the options just like sucked. Okay, so that's literally it. So simple, you guys. Like the what's gonna take you the longest is just gathering your ingredients and then it's just so easy to mix it up. I'll give you a close up on what this looks like. All right, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope that it was helpful for somebody. If you liked it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more planty content. Thank you guys so much. Also, leave me a comment if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer them. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.